Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have... Deborah Clopton. Yes, we do. And it is... Y'all, it's so good. Grab your tissues. Oh, my goodness. Sarah and I both teared up during the interview. So, yeah. um, Her story is amazing. Her her journey of what she's gone through. And I mean, I don't want to use that word journey that much. I would rather use career. But I mean, her her story is a journey of what she's gone through. Right. It's just, I mean, I met Deb uh, three years ago, I think, at the 20 books to 50K. A conference in Vegas, and she just is such a go getter. She's so positive. She just, I just love her. She's a fellow Texan. So, y'all, you know, I say in the podcast that in the background, we're going to have Texas, my Texas playing in the background. But um, yeah, it's it's a really fun interview. So, what's been yeah. going on with you, Sarah? Uh, still unpacking, mm-hmm. and we've ordered some furniture and stuff. And so I'm getting some big bookcases for my office. Oh, yay. Oh, That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully they'll arrive. We've learned that um, everything seems to be delayed. Yes. And, you know, I just, I'm not sure why, but everything is coming later than we thought. And so. Well, it's because of COVID. I mean, yeah. my daughter, I think I told you my daughter, uh, they moved into their oh, house yeah. last year around this, uh, well, around this time. And they are still waiting for a refrigerator and a dishwasher that they have already paid for. Yeah. It's coming, yeah. but you yeah. Know. yeah. So, yeah. So hopefully ours will get here and then I can get everything set up and I'll feel better. And, but the house is kind of, we're kind of back to normal ish, but things are just, you know, still, mm-hmm. we have a list, you know, a mile long of things to do. And mm-hmm. in my story, my next book is kind of it was percolating in the back of my head and the other day I was like wait what was my character's name I don't even remember <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get back into it so it's gonna take me a little while I'm not one of those people like Deb talks in this yes. interview about how her writing helped her get through some health mm-hmm. issues mm-hmm. and I just for me it's like I have to focus on yeah. getting everything set up and then once I'm set up I can get back to it so yeah. So what about you? What have you been doing? Well, I've just been working on my edits and I did this um, um, five day challenge by this girl that I um, found on uh, tw- uh, not fa- TikTok. Sorry, y'all. Um, and her name is Zoe Walters and um, she she's a coach, but she did this five day challenge. And so I've been doing that just to, I mean, I knew I was going to get my edits done, but just to kind of give me an extra, you know, a little extra peer pressure, you mm-hmm. know, or support, however you want to look at it. But I'm way, I'm really ahead of schedule. Um, my, I need to have it done by the 26th of July, but I'm trying, I moved that, like I moved the date up to the 15th because we just, I'm supposed to do some stuff with my mom and sisters and then I'm going on vacation. So I just wanted to try to have it done by the 15th. So then I, I have a week to read it on my Kindle and then I can yeah. mark some things. And, yeah. um, but I, I actually am even ahead of schedule on that. So it's been great. Um, I really love this little story and I'm shocked that I love it because <laughs> Of the way that it was written, and because for a while you didn't, I hated everything. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, I really do, and it's made me laugh. And uh, so those are, you know, those are just all good things. Um, but yeah, so that's really all I've been doing. Um, have not really. I uh, well, I finished Hail Mary, which oh yeah, wowza. Wowza, wowza, wowza. Mm-hmm. So good. I cannot recommend it more. Or oh, good. Yeah, I cannot recommend it more. It is just so fabulous. And um, but I just uh started boyfriend material uh audiobook, uh, which is a male male British uh rom com. Very much in the uh I've only I'm only maybe 
five chapters in, six, five chapters in, but it's very Bridget Jonesy, mm -hmm. you know, that feel. So um, it's gotten great reviews and stuff. So I'll let y'all know how that is, but yeah, mostly I'm just working and um, yeah, I feel good. I, I, it just feels good. I feel very optimistic, which, you know, maybe I'm coming out of the funk. I don't know, but um, yeah, it, it's been good. a good week and, and think I've gotten things done. So that's great. Okay. That's good. Well, we need to come up with a question of the week because we've been doing that for the last couple of weeks. So what do you think we should ask or talk about this week? Well, in light of Deb's interview, so um, when you guys hear it, you'll know. <laughs> but in light of Deb's interview, let's ask, um, like, is there someone in your life that knows about your business, like that can yes. step in and if something were to happen to you um, that could at least keep the lights on mm -hmm. until you come back. Um, and if not, or, or at least log into your yeah, account. Log into your account. <laughs> yeah. Check. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, let's just do that. Let's just yeah, ask I think that. that. And good. then once you hear the interview, you'll know why. Um, but it's, yeah, the interview is just so great, y'all. Yeah. 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 So we should get to it. Yep. All right. So here's Deb. Well, today we're really excited to talk to Deborah Clopton. How are you, Deborah? I'm great. Uh, we're so you? happy you're here. This is going to be such you. a fun interview. It's going to be great. <laughs> so let me read your bio real quick. Okay. Uh, international bestselling author Deborah Clopton writes clean and wholesome small town romances, especially with cowboys. In 2016, she decided to take control of her publishing career after publishing 30 books traditionally. She returned contracts along with advance money to her publishers of 10 years and opened her own publishing company, and she never looked back. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just a little snippet. Of yeah, yeah. We're going to get more into her story, though. So tell us how you got into writing. Okay. So um, I wouldn't, I didn't. In my senior year, at the end of it, at the party, my English teacher, where I made C's because I had read so much, I read, I read, and I would read in English. So my grades weren't that great in English, but she <laughs> took me to the side and she told me, you need to be a writer. And I, it shocked me. And I never even I had never even thought of being a writer. Wow. And so um, I went ahead and I also knew I was going to marry my my first husband and uh but I wasn't going to marry him until I could support myself and he knew that I'm very independent and so I started college I made it through the first semester and I knew that wasn't for me we lived in a small town I didn't want to be a banker I didn't want to be a teacher I didn't want to be you know any of that and so yep. I was like, what am I going to do and right when I'm thinking that an old friend called me and she had become a hairdresser and she called me and she said you need to do this oh, I didn't I never messed with hair. I had long, straight hair, you know, and but I thought, well, I'm going to try because it would be a perfect job, especially if I ever decided to be an author. It would give me inspiration, you know, and so mm -hmm. I started school and I was really good at it. I became quickly the top <laughs> school, you know, going there and uh, shocked me. But um so I worked, I worked at my salon. I built it up for eight years. I had two little boys. And when they entered school, I told Wayne, I said, I think I'm going to try to write a book. And <laughs> on Thanksgiving morning, I started and I could never stop. And, uh, <laughs> and I mean, I, I just hooked. And it, but it uh, and my first book got a three page uh, revision letter and I was shocked you know I didn't know what to do with it there was nobody in my little town near me but I'm 100 miles from Houston and mm -hmm. uh, I had learned I had heard that RWA the founding group of RWA was right there and so mm -hmm. I loaded up one Saturday and I took my letter and I went and <laughs> walked in they were so glad to see me and they said well so what are you here for and I said well I got this letter you know <laughs> 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 and anyway that book never got published but it's it sent me to RWA in the uh following year my husband said um you know you're you get all these rejection letters and you get all these redo letters but you're always talking about RWA, that national convention. So why don't you go this year? And I said, because I can't leave you and the boys. And he said, yeah, you can. And so he, <laughs> he got me a plane ticket. I got a ticket and I flew to RWA in, um, oh, the ones with the arch, uh, 
anyway, St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis, yeah. And it was mind blowing. You know, I went in, I went, I started learning all the classes and um, I met editors. And it, it, like I say, my travel after that was long. It was about 10 years. Well, it was. Um, uh, and I don't know if I should go into it, but so I got a lot of rejections and I got a lot of revisions. Mm -hmm. And um, the last revision I got, I wrote, I was trying to write more serious books, you know, uh, where they had problems, you know, Mm -hmm. and and of course in my books now they they have problems. But anyway, uh, the head of their sexy series was at a conference, a, a smaller conference that I went to and I was questioning what I was doing. And she, they'd started a love inspired, not love inspired. They'd started a, a romance series that had humor in it. And mm-hmm. she said, if you've never gotten published and you're trying to write the same thing, try something new. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there and I thought, well, I've been thinking about doing a funnier story. So I came home and I wrote this series about this little town <laughs> and uh, I sent it to her and it was, it was, it was good. And uh, she sent me a revision letter and then she sent me another revision letter. <laughs> and then she sent me another revision letter. And I hadn't put sex in the books because I just, you know, I, and, and she, she sent me another letter. And she said, Debbie, I love the story, but it's just not going to work in the series. And so at that point in time, my boys were entering in seventh grade, junior high and high school. And they were playing football. And I was a little, I was feeling uh, drawn to to put my writing down for a while and concentrate on my family. And I did, it was hard, but I closed my computer. I thought I'll go back when the youngest one is a senior and he'll be ready for me to get out of his life a little bit. And, um, (laughs) and, you know, sometimes you have to listen to what you're feeling because uh, my husband had started a new business and we were, the boys, we went on vacation that summer and we went on vacation the next summer and then, and we had a good time. We went to lots of ball games and then my husband died suddenly mm-hmm. of an aneurysm. Just, he woke up in the night hurting. I got him in the car. We went to the hospital and he died. I never saw him again. They took him in the back and, mm-hmm. and he died. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's going to come out in a little bit, but, um, and I had still not sold, but I had that book sitting there. And, mm-hmm. uh, anyway, it, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and tell it in this, but yeah, go, so ahead. Then, uh, go ahead. We're listening. <laughs> okay. So then, uh, then I was mourning, you know, it was, yeah. it was so hard because we'd been married 23 years and we loved each other very much. And um, so I was at church and the little girl, the young woman who led the singing, she always knew that I was crying during the service, during the singing. And, uh, and, and I had had it, it was about, it was about three, about three or four weeks after Wayne had died. And I was just crying. And I just said, you know, I need something. You're going to have to, I, I'm, I, I need something. You're going to have to please do something to help me. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I was doing okay in front of people, trying to let them know, you know, that I was okay but inside, I really wasn't. And, um, you know, of course, I, I, I don't mean this just to be a, a witness, but in my brain, I heard him out loud say, go home and make Lacey Brown for me. And that's the hero, heroine of my book that I had written. And I said, and that, at that time, Harlequin, in the time that I had stopped writing, they had come out with their Love Inspired series, their Christian series. They didn't have it before. Mm-hmm. I walked home, got the book down, and the Christian the Christian line of it came, and I knew it was going to get published. I mean, as I was putting it in, I knew, mm-hmm. and then they contact. I sent it to, I picked who I was going to send it to. I sent it to Krista Stover. She was the editor at Love Inspired, and, uh, and then they sent out a thing that said, uh, this year at the RWA conference in Dallas, uh, there they we need people to enter the contest. I didn't think my book would win the contest. Mm-hmm. I did because mm-hmm. I read the contest books a lot, and I just didn't think that my book fit into, and it didn't. My book was different than most of the books, mm-hmm. but they needed it. So I thought, okay, I'll just send it in. Well, it was at the very end of the time to send it in, and uh I got a call in like three days and told me I was a finalist in the 
you know, in the wow. love inspired thing. And, uh, and then uh, they had sent it to the editors and the main editor, she got the books in and she looked at them and she read mine first. And so like three days later, I get a call and they, they want to buy it. So, I mean, that's wow. how quickly you don't ever know what the plan is for your life. And then I was able to, yeah. And so that's, I wrote books while I mourned and that was, and I wrote the, the humorous, the books have laughter in them. They have love and they are to help people get over things or to lose themselves in the books. And that's, that's my goal always has been. So oh, fantastic. Yeah. So what do you wish you'd known about, I mean, what is your definition of success now? Um, okay. Like, has it changed from when you started? Does it change every not, year? Not, not really. Um, so my, my original uh, success was that, let me quit squeaking, was that um, I wanted to be able to make a living at it and retire from my very successful hair business. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, cause I had been doing it for at that point in time, when I sold, I had been a hairdresser for 23 years and I knew that I wasn't going to spend the next 23 years doing, it, even though I loved all the people I did, but working, standing on your feet from for 10 hours a day, you know, I didn't take a break. I drank, I, I ate a snicker and drank a large <laughs> Dr. Pepper every day. That's what got me through the day. And then I came home and cooked supper. Then I uh, put the boys in bed and then I sat down in our rope, you know, and I, and anyway, so um, that was me making a living was my main goal. But yeah. then after what happened with Wayne, it was also that I could touch people's lives. Mm-hmm. And then I could help them through hard times and that that would make me feel good. And when I started getting the letters from people that I helped, it was a big, it was wonderful. That's yeah. Kind of magic. So, yeah. yeah. That just sort of is the verification and the yes. validation. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So that's my main goal now. And I, I'm glad I am making a really good living, but uh, helping readers is the main thing of my success. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is wonderful. Well, what do you wish you'd known about writing and craft? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready. Hit us with it. Okay. Okay. So like I said, uh, I was, I read too much in high school. So English was not my strong point. And, uh, when I saw, when, when they bought me, uh, uh, Krista told me, She said, your voice, the way you sound in your books is your most important, best thing. Mm -hmm. So don't. And she said, so when I edit it, if I edit out your voice or if any of the other editors try to mess with your voice, you stand up and you say no. Mm -hmm. And that was the best advice I ever got. And see, the difference mm-hmm. was when I was trying to get published, it wasn't my voice. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. trying to get published in series that, but my voice actually the way, and you can hear how I talk. I'm very Texan. I was, <laughs> was going to say in the background of this podcast, we're going to have Texas. My yeah. Texas yes. yeah. and, and my voice is very, and I mean, I can, I can go places and they'll, people will turn around and look at me. And so I know, and I was trying to get rid of that. I wasn't real proud of it. But when I wrote this series, I knew that that voice needed to come out because it's a little bit humorous. Mm-hmm. And so that's what she was talking about. Don't let them take that Texas slang out of there. And so I learned to do that. Yes. And I stood yeah. up for that. That's great. Yeah. 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 Um, that, oh. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just looking to make sure I had answered the question. Yeah. <laughs> and so I learned in my craft to to do that. And then but I also learned if they were helping me make it sound better a little bit sometimes. Because some, mm-hmm. you don't want to look just to sound. No, always yeah. the same. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I ha- I mean, I because, <laughs> you know, I have pretty, yeah. I have pretty strong uh, accent. And, but I also have. Uh, my books, I was just, I'm editing my next book and I was thinking, you know what? I was trying to switch it up and I thought, you know what? This is not my voice. You know, I'm, when you try to um, be like other people is when you, 
a lot of times get yourself mm-hmm. in trouble. So I yeah. pulled some stuff back and was like, no, this is how I write. This is yes. how I tell a story and my readers love that. And so that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, I agree with you uh, yes. completely. So what do you wish you'd known about marketing um, when you got started or over the okay. time? So that's uh, like we were talking, that's a very important question. Mm-hmm. And I recently mm-hmm. learned even more about it yeah. um, after my recent illness. Um, yeah. But uh, I knew um, that I needed to really get into marketing when I went indie. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, the first year I did it. And then I, uh, but I was still doing, I still did great. I out, My first year with almost no extra marketing, I've surpassed any year that I'd had writing for, for Harlequin. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it was a success just off of that, but I wanted to increase it. And uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, she raises, they raised the, our four small grandchildren at home and they're homeschooling. And I knew that I needed somebody in charge, somebody that could eventually take over my business if something happened to me. And so I asked Heidi if she would want to come to work for me part time. And I had a specific job that I needed her to do. I thought that I could increase my business if I had somebody fill out newsletters, you know, it, to, to, to have regular newsletters, you got to fill out all that information and, yeah, put right. the, and you know, you're talking about the newsletter at the paid newsletter ads. Yes. Correct? Robin yeah. Reed. Yes. Front yeah. Those. And yeah. I Robin knew Reed. that I, I couldn't take the time to do that. I tried, mm-hmm. but I have only do one every other, every few months, you know? Yeah. And so Heidi, I, she, Heidi, she thought I was just asking her to work for her so she could stay home with the kids. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was like, no, you know, I'm not, I really need you. And I can guarantee you that you'll see that your paycheck comes out of what you do. Mm-hmm. And she, um, she, I said, what do you need to stay home with the girls? So I could make sure that she made what she needed to make. And um, so she came in and we, I showed her all the places I would like books. I would like to try and get at least two to three early on because it was a smaller amount. I said, you know, maybe three, because I really wanted to get my name out there. Maybe, maybe each book, each first in series that's free gets uh, about three newsletters a month. And so there was about four, four series about that time. And uh, she said, okay. And so she, I said, each one gets at least one big one and then two little ones. And uh, so she, she set them all up and I was over here just to write, you know, and just working. And then she set them all up and then they started coming out. And within two months, I was able to show her what a success that her, what yeah. she was doing was for me. And so to me, I do the Amazon ads and I do the Facebook ads, but that is my baseline. And recently in October, uh, Y'all had invited me to come on to do this newsletter, and I was a little bit shocked, Mm -hmm. but I was so excited. Y'all had, and it was going to be in October. Well, October 1st is when I went to, um, to, on a retreat with two of my author friends. We drove uh, across state. We were in uh, Hot Springs, and um, we'd been there two days, and I got sick. I thought I had eaten something and it made me sick in my stomach and uh, and I we went home and I went ahead and we were going to watch something on TV and I sat down but I finally I was like yeah I got to go go to bed and I need a, I need something and I think I might throw up or something and mm-hmm. so I went in the bedroom and laid down and my husband called and he and I told him I said I think I got food poison or something and uh and I said but I'll, I'll be better in the morning well, in the morning, I, I wasn't. And then I started worrying that maybe I had COVID. And so I told my friends to stay away from me. I was going to stay in my room and see if I got better. And Chuck called and he said, can I, I'm going to come get you because we had taken my vehicle, but I didn't want to hurt. I didn't want Kelly to not get to, you know, drive, mm-hmm. stay the whole time. And, uh, and I wouldn't go out the door. Uh, Thank goodness the bathroom was right there beside me, but I told them to stay away and I didn't want to give them something. And then, uh, but I told Chuck, I said, let's just give it another day. Well, by that night when he called, I wasn't, uh, my words weren't completely right. And I, you know, and so he called Kelly and he asked me, he said, Chuck, I think you're right. He said, I'm coming to get her in the morning. He said, I think you're right. You need to take her to the hospital. So he came, he took me, Try to find some place to get a COVID test. There wasn't one. He took me 
uh, he, he headed toward Texas and he stopped at Texarkana and found an emergency room. And he told that he, when he, when he came to get me to fill out the form, I knew nothing. I had lost. I know. I don't remember anything after that. Wow. I, I, I had completely, and he realized it when he, I was trying to sign my name and I couldn't. So he went back in and he said, she can't, she can't even sign her name. She doesn't even know me. And she, yeah. <laughs> I called him the, I called him the man who helped me or something like that. And, <laughs> and uh, they took me in and the doctor checked everything. Uh, they did the COVID, they checked everything. And he came out and he said, she doesn't have anything, but something's wrong. You're right. So I'm going to send you across the way to this hospital over there and you're going to see the guy in the emergency room I think he'll be able to help y'all and that's where we went and we walked in the guy prayed with us and then he said he looked at Chuck after he had made some questions and he said I think she has um encephalitis uh, oh my there's another word in front of it and he said but it's a three-day test so we have to test her you know they have to take things. And he said, it starts in the brain. And, uh, and so, but I'm going to go ahead and start treating her for it. And I don't remember that doctor. He had, he's the one that discovered everything. And, uh, some wow. people takes a long time to discover that there's a movie out that has it. And the girl in it went through all kinds of stuff before, but I went right into the two people that helped me, the one in the emergency room sent me to the right person and he figured it out. But what's humorous is none of them realized that after I woke up, they thought, even though my words were weird and they thought I knew who I was, they thought I knew what was going on around me. And I walked down the hall with a, with a girl making sure I could walk and I walked upstairs and she checked off that I could do it and I was going to get released. And I woke up and that was after three weeks and I woke up that night hurting and I looked over where and I found Chuck in his chair over there where he slept for all that time. And I said, something's wrong. And he's, I have back trouble. And he said, is it your, is it your back? And I said, yes, but it's not normal. And see, so I had actually woke, was telling him that. And that mm -hmm. was when I knew what was going on and they mm -hmm. immediately x-rayed me and I had three blood clots in my lungs. Oh and, my uh, God. Yeah. Yeah. And they immediately started treating me. And of course I stayed longer in the hospital, but from that moment when I woke up hurting and talk, told him I, that's when I remember when it was only about a week and a half, they got rid of them. I got released and I, they told me it'll take you, you know, it'll, it'll take you probably at least six months to get your memory back, to get everything going, your words coming out. I couldn't even hardly remember my kids' names. And all of my family had come to see me, and I didn't remember any of them. Oh my so God. the deal oh. is, when Chuck and I got married, we both, he was from a divorce and had two sons that were exactly 10 years younger than my two sons. And my two sons, um, you know, so my sons had inheritance from when their dad died, um, that, that, that I, you know, I worked so that I didn't have to interrupt any of that and they were going to get all that. And so, and plus my writing career, um, and then Chuck's kids had inheritance land and all this stuff. And so we, we went in before we got married and we worked really hard through, you know, emotional things, you know, cause we were combining and we were ready, but we had to set up for our kids on the separate parts of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we did. And that included me going into uh, an LLC, you know, and taking my books out of my name and putting them in my publishing name. And that way, if something if I died, which I came close to, then my sons immediately inherit the business. And my daughter in law, who she realized in those moments after I didn't know anything and she had to go in with the help of my friend Kelly and my girl in in um, Dallas, I mean, uh, California, she had to go in and work on my business and turn some mm -hmm. ads off. And, and, and anyway, she realized then exactly how important she was to the business. Right. And uh, of course we, <laughs> we did too. And we gave her a big raise, you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so it's really good. And, um, but that's my, my main uh marketing you know i know that sounds weird but 
No, I think it's really, really smart to think about that and have something, a framework in place. Mm -hmm. So uh, for people who are listening and are interested like me, like what, what are there a couple things that you would recommend people make sure are handled like the LLC, like the, Yes. The inheritance part of it, yes. like what would happen, anything else that you'd recommend? Yeah, the LLC enables you to put your books not in your name, but in the business's name. Right. And then if you die and you put them in, they, they are inheriting that portion of it. And so when you die, they automatically have control of it. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to go through. Uh, Obey or anything. Yes. And, 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 and they own. It's just that my name, my books are in that other name. And, and as far as I know, that's a, that's the smartest thing you can do. Um, okay. In the beginning, I thought about it, but mm-hmm. I thought, oh, I just have, you know, this many books. It's not that important. <laughs> but then when I was going to get married, I knew and, and Chuck did also that that was probably what I needed to do and the best move that I can make. Um, yeah. yeah. And a wheel, you know, wheels are so important. But if you have somebody in your life, and I know that uh, 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 Jamie, sorry, my brain went blank. (laughs) Uh, It does that some. Uh, But I know that Jamie, your daughter or your daughter-in-law. My daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have someone in getting involved in in, in that. So uh, I just suggest if you have anybody in your family or, or if, you have a family, but nobody's interested that you have somebody that can help, you know, can help them get used to it if something were to happen. Right. Because even if you don't get to the point of near death or die, right. but you get like, say she you have COVID and co- people that got COVID that didn't end up in the hospital were sick for weeks. Yes. And, still, and didn't feel, you know, you need help. Yeah. Um, you know, I did, and she, you cannot predict what will happen yeah. in the future. And That's so, right. because of that, you need to have those safeguards in place. Yeah. And thank goodness, if I didn't have Heidi, well, at least I was with Kelly, my good friend, and she. We had just at that meeting, we had just decided. You know, we might need to know each other's passwords to everything. Mm-hmm. And we had literally the day before that happened, like no given each other passwords and that she came crazy. on the way home. She wow. stopped, at the, she stopped at the hospital. Kelly Coates Gilbert is who my friend is. Mm-hmm. And she stopped at the hospital and she helped them get into my accounts, you know, and anyway. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's and I, a small detail, but it's so important. It's so, very I mean, important. Yes. And yeah. um, also while I'm saying that I also, have to say my husband, Chuck, he's been so helpful, you know, and I was single for and working, never thinking I would remarry. And uh, my friends uh, decided they knew somebody. He, <laughs> he lived in the town about 30 miles from me, but he actually lives in between where I live and here, but we never met. And, uh, and uh, she said the two of my friends at the 10th grade graduate uh, graduation no, the 20 year graduation thing that I went to, he was asking me, are you dating yet? And it had been, you know, been a long time since Wayne died. And I said, no, I'm, I'm working really hard, you know, and I, I just don't know if I'm going to or not, but I, I sometimes think about it. And he said, well, I know who you need to date. <laughs> and, uh, his, his wife, his, uh, his wife worked at, at uh, the other, the little town that was down from us. She was a teacher there and he went, he graduated with me, you know? And so all my friends that were sitting around the table, they didn't, uh, anyway, he went to their, the next week he went to their, uh, uh, grant, uh, fire, you know, we burned the, the wood. Sorry, y'all. Sometimes my brain is not a oh, bonfire, good. the bonfire and Chuck yeah. was there and he walked up to Chuck and he said, are you dating yet? And Chuck said, no, not really. And he said, well, when you get ready, I got somebody for you. And he started <laughs> telling him about me and Chuck, he wasn't really ready. And then he went home and he kept thinking about it and he called uh, them up. And my friend had started giving Christmas parties just for me. She, cause she knew I didn't go out. I didn't get outside. And so she, this was the third year of her annual Christmas party that I was the main person she invited and then she invited friends and I'm sitting at the bar and she's standing on the other side of it. And he walked, Jim walks, Jimbo walks in and he said, he comes straight over to me. He says, so are you dating yet? And it had been a 
that was October when he asked me, and this was uh, the 1st of December. And I said, no, but I'm really thinking about it now, you know? And he said, well, I got the guy for you. And my friend's sitting over there and she goes, who? And uh, cause he knew her and she, he looked over and he said, Chuck Parks. And she went, yes and she looked at me from the table and she said yes 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 you need to go out with him and so Chuck is very valuable we did we immediately knew that we were meant for each other and he's such a supporter in my business and he uh he does all my he took over my my bank statements he so he actually he actually works for me too he doesn't <laughs> you know and so he was able to do the the um you know the business part of it and Heidi was able to help me with the other so i've been very blessed yeah yeah that is well, so great though yeah. yeah it sounds like you just had a personal matchmaker which is awesome yeah. <laughs> And I did, I did. And yeah. we, we tease, he, he, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a great thing. Yeah. Well, he, and going back to the password thing, you know, you don't have to give somebody your actual passwords. There are all kinds of systems. What is yeah. the one? Um, uh, last pass is last what I pass. use. Yes. Where, yeah. So, but just having that and which by the way, I don't have, which I'm going to set up when we get off this call. <laughs> yes. It is so important. It's it is. very important. Yes. And it's something that I have I have sort of let fall by the wayside. So I, that's very it's good. A good reminder. It's a good yeah, reminder to do good. all those things and just be ready because you don't know what could happen. You just don't know. Yeah. What assumptions did you make at the beginning of your writing career? And looking back, did they turn out to be right or wrong? Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. Um, this was a little bit funny, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that me getting published was going to be hard that <laughs> and it was true <laughs> it was very true you know it doesn't take everybody nowadays they can start indie if they want but it took me 10 hard long years to get published mm -hmm. and uh but um through all my workshops and then through my writing and then when I was published, I was hit. My first book was a huge success. Uh, they normally, your books at the third series, you know, most series back then were book three. That was the mm -hmm. end because your sales were going down. My sales were going up. All the books sold over 100,000 copies and that book just kept going. And mm -hmm. so they were not letting me go. And I learned that you can make a series huge. And that book has... That series has 23 books in it and it only came to an end because <laughs> it only came to an end because I said I knew that at that point in my career that I was going to go indie. Mm -hmm. I had made that decision and I said and it was a six book contract and it had and I said, OK, on that contract, I'll do the last three books in the Texas in the uh, Mule Hollow series. My series name is Mule Hollow. In the Mule, now it's Texas Matchmakers. It has a new indie name. But um, and then the next three books will be a new series because I knew I was going to go indie. And those books, after ten years, were starting to come back to me slowly but surely. And I knew I was going to print them. And so um, now I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just assumptions that you made. And so my assumption was that um, sometimes you um, think it's going to be hard and you're, it's not, it was wonderful. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. But I haven't had all those years where you were working hard doing your revision yes. letters and stuff. So it's almost like you were a 20, what, 15, 20 year overnight success. Right. Right. So you, right. You, That's what it I actually was after I had worked 10 years to get published. Then when it, when I was, you know, and all the terrible stuff that happened, I knew what my, I knew and my, my readers loved it. And it, the it's, they're funny. The books are funny and heartfelt. You go from laughter to, to dealing with something important and that's how I felt. And um, they helped me smile and they helped other people smile. And I still try to do that. But now in my indie career, I went more clean and wholesome. Mm -hmm. And so, but they won't advertise. Like if I get a book bub, it's always in the Christian. And that makes some people mad because a lot of my books are clean and wholesome, but they won't publish me anywhere else because that's where I started. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. they keep me there. And yes. so it's okay. Clean and wholesome <laughs> can mix in with uh, Christian also. Yes. 
So yeah. well, I, yeah. I have a question. So what what prompted you to go Indy, and like what were the steps you took? Indy. Uh huh. To go in. Well, okay. So at 19, oh, well, I, I actually was 20 when I opened my first hair salon. I was independent person, mm-hmm. and when I went into uh, publishing, you know, they control everything. They everything. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I finally had to. Well, Krista, my first editor, after after seven books of working with me, she gave me freedom. But mm-hmm. then she ended up, she kept going up the line. And so she had to leave Love Inspire because they wanted her to move up into another bigger, you know, thing. And uh, I got a new editor. And uh, anyway, uh, I had to finally say, this is the book. I would see, she would buy a book and then she would try to get me to change it. And I, and I finally, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I said, said, this is the book you bought. That's the book you're going to get. You know, yeah. and I wrote it on my own. So when you go into indie, you kind of have to know what you want to do. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's what I do. And thank goodness. Uh, I write very fast, but anyway, um, what was the original question? Why, why you decided to go into and what steps okay. did you take? So, Yep. Because I'm an independent person and I love owning my own stuff, I got tired. And and the and as soon as Indy came out, I watched the numbers mm-hmm. and I my sales started going down. It wasn't mm-hmm. because my books were getting bad, because those last six books that I wrote were really good books. They're some of my most. I'm very proud of those books. It was because people were going Indy and they were buying mm-hmm. their books online and they were. Yeah they were canceling their love inspired thing and they were buying what they wanted and more mm-hmm. and more people were doing that. And I watched and I saw, and I, we, me and three others met at Nink at a, the writing convention and we talked about it and we were all their top, we were all their top authors and we talked about it. And I, and one of the other ones was going in deep. She wasn't going completely and she still, she does both, but I was going all the way. I wanted to control. <laughs> I was ready to be back in control. And, and so when it when it hit I did it yeah yeah I love it yeah yeah Yeah, I I had that same same thing because I love being able to control my covers and and mark it and mark the price down when I want and me too all the things that are frustrating about Mm -hmm. like ACX and not being able to control your price and all that stuff it was the same way traditional and so if you like to be independent if you like to make your own decisions, then it's a great way to go. Right. And I talked with several, a lot of my author friends from Love Inspired came and talked to me, to, you know, at, at our conference and they knew what I was fixing to do. And they, and then they watched me and uh, they knew that I was doing well. And by the book numbers, you know, um, mm-hmm. when you go yeah. with things. and, uh, and they would ask me, but most of them didn't want to, con- didn't want to do the work that I was doing. No, you know, the marketing work, you know, I, mm-hmm. I work lots of hours and I, I love it, you know, and I, thank goodness I married a guy that he, he thinks I'm great. He likes, <laughs> he's, he's impressed by what I do. Sometimes he has to say, calm down, but you know, he, I get to travel with him and I write while we're traveling. And so mm-hmm. it works great. I get to see things and, and anyway, it's wonderful. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Have you ever made a mistake that turned out to be a good thing? Uh, yes, it sounds kind of odd, but uh, when I was getting ready to go indie, I had always, my agent knew that I had hoped one day to maybe sell to one of the bigger, you know, uh, mm-hmm. industries. And she said, well, why don't you, why don't we try to sell you to one of those, you know, bigger things instead of just category, which is what I wrote in. Yeah. And the deal is that those other publishers don't normally publish a category author you have Mm -hmm. to really show really great sales because they you're so much of what you're selling is in a mail or a mail order and Mm -hmm. and, you know i I made like six percent on those which is very small or you know like right yeah but um but my income was still good you know i was able to live on what i wrote but anyway she said why don't we try that before i go indian and there was my brain, you know, it says <laughs> they knew where it wanted to go, but she offered that. And I said, okay. And uh, so we sold and I signed a, I signed a fairly decent contract. I had three people offer me and uh, 
I signed one. And uh, I'm used to being in control a little bit, you know, yeah. but not with, not with them. And <laughs> the first thing, I, we were leaving for vacation that morning, and uh, they sent me an email. And so my agent was in uh, 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 over near California. So mm-hmm. she's, she's behind me two hours. And they are ahead of me two hours in New York. So I, we're on our way on vacation and I have my computer in my lap. We've been gone about 30 minutes. It's about 630 in the morning. And I get this email from them telling me that they they got my cover ready. I hadn't even started writing the book yet. And they got my cover ready there because it was a cowboy story. And they sent me this cover and I'm sitting there in the car and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And Chuck, he looks over <laughs> at me. Goes, What's wrong? I said, they just sent me my cover and there are 15 independent covers out there on Amazon with the same picture. <laughs> yes. And I knew I had really made a big mistake. So my poor agent, I sent her a text because I had written a novella with them one time mm-hmm. and that novella, there were four of us in this book and it got a horrible cover, but they did have good covers, but I got a horrible cover and I told, I warned her, I said, okay, now, if they try to give me a bad cover, I'm going to fight because I'm not coming out with, in this, with this bit, with a horrible cover. And so I sent her a text. I said, I know you're asleep, but when you wake up, I'm just warning you that there could be trouble started. <laughs> the text and, within me is about to come out. <laughs> yeah. And so then I went on Amazon and I downloaded all those covers and put them mm-hmm. on a sheet. And I emailed her and I said, I don't want this cover. Everybody else has this cover. And so I hope you're going to work a little bit harder on it. And anyway, so yes, eventually my agent, she woke up and she agreed with me. Thank goodness. And uh, they ended up giving me a a very pretty cover on that book. But um, I knew right then that those three books were going to get written and I was never going to look back. So (laughs) the question that was, it was a great thing, but it taught me. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it gave yeah. me freedom that I, when I went ending, man, I, my career was, that was it. I was always going to be in control. But, yeah. 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 Well, what about the opposite? Have you ever had what you thought was like a really? Okay, I wrote this down because I could have <laughs> said that both of those are the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. 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 So then, um, okay. So this is uh, funny, you know, for me. Um I have never had a brilliant idea, you know, (laughs) I I have regular ideas and I work really, really hard on them and, uh, and they come out good. But so for me, uh, no, (laughs) I don't think I've ever had a brilliant idea. I have had so, so ideas that I worked really hard on and my voice helps them come out and be successful. So, uh, yeah, I I think that's, I love that though, because I do too. I you do know, too. like sometimes we, we think something's great and it's not, but then if you can take something that's like, yeah, it's pretty good and work on it, work on it and, and bring it, like yes. polish it up and make yeah. it, make it shine. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. And, and so for me, that was the biggest thing. Yes. So, so I want to uh, combine the next two questions, which is about mindset, but then also we had down that we were going to ha- ask you about your health thing, but we covered that already. But I, before we started recording, you told us that when you got home, you had books that needed to be finished and two more on deadline. And you wrote those books, even though you were still not 100%. Um, but I think that goes to your mindset. Like we met at the... 20 books, 50 K, I think. And I remember just thinking how um, positive you were and how, I mean, I just was drawn to that by you. And I think that that really does come out in that story. So if you don't mind just telling us about how, when you got home and, and how your mindset played a part in you getting those books done. Okay. Um, Recovery. yeah, and your recovery too. Yeah, and I, yes, it, while I was recovering, um, I've always been uh, self motivated and driven. Always, mm-hmm. um, I started working when I was in a uh, sophomore, and uh, I I just I love it. And uh, mm-hmm. so when I came home, uh, 
<laughs> Chuck had to warn me, you know, he was like, now, Debbie, you got to rest, you know. And I said, I know, but I've got to get these done. He said, if we have to cancel them, we can cancel them. And then you'll finish them. I said, but I'm going to try, you know. And uh, and the trying helped heal me, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it, it really did uh, because of the way my brain this is what is so wild. My, you, you are, sometimes your creative mind works on its own. Yes. See? And yeah. so my, I was kind of not, I didn't know names. So I, I knew as soon as I started, you never knew what na- whose name was going to come out and be in that dictation. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the funniest thing. And I still do it sometimes. Um, it's very odd, but names were the hardest thing. And uh, so I called my characters all kinds of names. And finally, I was like, OK, when it came to somebody's name, I just put name. And I told, them, you know, and then when I went in and did the edit, I filled the right names in because it was a whole lot easier doing that than hunting through and seeing all these crazy names <laughs> that I had to go in and replace. But then but the creative part of my mind, it oh, it took over and mm-hmm. it was wonderful. And, and you know. It was shocking, really, but sometimes you have to rely on just your creative mind and don't question it. And I write, I'm a, I don't write from a, uh, okay. My an book, outline? No, I don't write from an outline. You know, like when I wor- wrote for Love Inspire, I had to come up with an outline to sell the book, but very seldom did it really go by that. And they, un- and they began to understand that and they didn't really care, but I had to give them something to buy the book on. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as an indie publisher, I go, I, I write it straight out and, uh, and I love it. I, I, I get excited too, you know, and um, if I, 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 I just love writing a book and learning the new parts of it. And in my illness, I learned that my brain, it doesn't really need me. <laughs> <laughs> it was working on its own and I was just listening and writing it down. So That's it worked great. out great. And my yeah. and it helped me, you know, it helped my brain. Uh, I actually got healed a little bit quicker than normal. I could still be healing and I am a little bit, but um, I now know most people's names. <laughs> That's what didn't you say you used some dictation during that and yeah. now you're doing yes and so I did I had been dictating I had been trying it out because um I, I love to write but I knew a lot of people were dictating and I got to thinking uh well what if something this is the strangest thing I thought well what if something ever happened and I couldn't type mm-hmm. could I dictate so I wanted to try it and uh I started and it takes a little while to get your brain to switch. Mm-hmm. And so I started and uh, it was hard. But then it wouldn't switch back. And I so <laughs> I, I dictated for about and I found a girl. I, I tried dictating on the, the things and then typing them in it or giving them. And mm-hmm. I didn't like it. So I hired someone um, off of one of those uh, groups that you can get in and hire somebody. And she's just a transcriber. She has nothing to do with books. She she transcribes stuff for all kinds of other people. And uh, she and I hired. Her. I, I had I had a lot of people apply, but when I looked at hers, I thought I'm going to try her. And she was really good. And she she would type it all out, and then I would get it back, and then I would go through hers and edit it. But for me, the hardest part about dictating the I created the story. I didn't really have to edit a lot out of my words, but I didn't always say new line or mm-hmm. new, you know, <laughs> things. And so I'd have to go through it. I'd sometimes have two pages with no blank in them, you know, because mm-hmm. I told her just you dictate, you you transcribe exactly what I say. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I didn't want her coming up with the, par- and, but I would forget to do it. So, uh, but in the end it worked, but it, it, it slowed my writing down. It was slower. When I write, I edit as I write. You know, mm-hmm. and yeah. and so anyway, when I came out of the hospital, she was going to have a baby. And so she was only writing. She was only going to be doing it again for about four or five weeks, I think. So we tried it. But then I and, and I said, but it was hard to, you know, it worked mm-hmm. great for my brain. But then I was having to go in and edit. And it was, you know, like that. And you, and you, you can't. When you're reading, uh, at least I can't, when I'm editing and reading it and editing it, it takes me a long time, mm-hmm. a, a long time. When I'm editing it, 
because I'm reading very slowly and making it, checking it. But when I'm right, creating it on my brand and typing it, typing it down, it may take me longer, a little bit longer to write the book. But when I get through with the book, I send it to the editor. I'm done. I, yeah. I have created it. And I and, and then I don't edit it again until it comes back from my first editor. Um, and I had to, I have three editors and I had to learn which one needed to go first. And she's the biggest editor. And she goes through and finds you know, anything that I may have forgotten or maybe something I need to get bigger on. And, uh, but she doesn't change my story. I don't, I don't use that anymore. I totally rely on my, and she's really good. And then I get it back and that's when I read it again. And mm-hmm. then I send it to my second editor who she's a reader and she finds things that got missed. And then my mom is my last editor <laughs> and she is just looking for any typos that got left out, you know, and, and it's got to where it works. I had them switched up. She was originally the first editor. And and now I think she's a little bit disappointed because she has to be the last editor, but she, <laughs> but she doesn't have to do as much hard work, but she's always, you know, anyway, it's really cute. Um, but anyway, so when I, on the dictating part real quick, I got sidetracked a little bit, but so after she, after my edit, my dictator took a break to have her baby, she was when she contacted me. I, you know, I told her that's good, and I started uh, writing what I, what I would dictate, and then I would bring the di- the twenty minute dictation in, and then I would type it. I mean, I would look at it and I would fix it then. I would not let myself like for her. I would dictate. Uh, it would be several dictations, but it was an hour's worth, so yeah. I could pay her by the hourly rate, and um. But I wouldn't do that because I knew how long it would be. And I didn't have the mindset to edit that much. So I would do 20 minutes. I would come in and then I would edit it right then before I would let myself go dictate anymore. I would edit it. Um, And then just recently, I have been actually just writing again. But the relief is that I know if I ever need to dictate, I have a plan. Mm-hmm. But now I joined a, uh, you know, where I go on with a group and we all write at a certain time and I love it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I edit as I'm going. So I'm back to normal. But I have that assurance that if I want to ever need to go back and dictate that I can do it. Yeah. But uh, my, my dictator came back and she my transcriber and she said, I'm back. And I said, I'm sorry, but I decided that, that now I need to write. And she said, "That's that's great. Whatever. If I'm, I'm always here if you need me." And so it it was it was fine. She's yeah. busy enough without me. Yeah, that's good. yeah. So well, when you say you go on with, line with the group, like a sprint room or something. Yes. Like now I'm on. Uh, what is that group? That new group? Clubhouse. Yeah, I saw you on there one time. Yes, on Clubhouse. I go in there every. Well, I'm not in there today. I'm with you girls, but. Um, <laughs> Every um every morning I write for about four hours and went straight like that and I love it and it it uh it gives me it's helped my brain uh because you know the focus is what's been one of the problems and now I know I go in and I focus you know and uh and and my books are coming out yeah because you had like a limited time that you could work on your writing after you got out of the hospital, right? Yes. My brain couldn't survive it. So you have to rest because literally my brain had to start over. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I I had to rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That must've been so scary. It was so, yes. And, and all I I wanted, it it was really, it it was great when I realized that my writing helped me Mm -hmm. and that gave me hope because at first I was like, okay, I hope I can write because I'm, you know, like I'm a self, I want to be able to provide for myself. I mean, me and my husband, we have great lives, but I want to know, you know, I don't, I, that's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so, uh, and sitting around drives me crazy, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so uh, anyway, it, it worked out great and I could do it, but there was a possibility that, you know, it, I would never get it all back. And, uh, now I'm, I'm at this point where I still struggle with names every once in a while. My granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, she's a, a 10 and uh, we went shopping the other day. And, and when I was getting out of the hospital, I worked really hard on their names, you know, mm-hmm. concentrating on their names. But uh, the truth is, before I got sick, 
I would get their names mixed up all the time because there's four of them, you know, and I would, <laughs> I, would go, <laughs> I would go through every name. Yeah. And so Tacey, yeah, we were walking through the mall the other day and she says, uh, Noni, because somebody, I needed somebody's name and I went through the list and she said, Noni, when you were just getting well, you were better with our names. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know, honey, but I'm more. I'm normal back to now. normal now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm more normal now. Yeah. So she laughed. Yeah, that's funny. That's uh, funny. Yeah. Well, I'm just so glad that it all worked out, but it was so scary, and it um, was. But we just had lots of people. I mean, I we were praying for you. We just, we just were. Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah. you. I, I, so I, I knew that. that fine. Um, you know, better and, and actually back to normal. So I'm pretty much back to normal. Yes. Um, um, I'm to a spot, you know, that I, I feel like I'm back to normal. My husband keeps pointing that out. Well, you used to forget that. And I'm like, I know, I know. So it's not to blame on my sickness, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. honestly, how about y'all? When I write for mm. hours, and you know, a long time and for days, I used my brain up and my kids, everybody, they could come in and they could tell when I had been writing hard because words just didn't want to come out. You know, I was like, well, I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, I'm physically exhausted after yes, a couple exactly. hours of writing. I'm just yes. done, like mentally and physically done. Yes. <laughs> so I understand. So now that. I'm back to normal versus getting tired because my brain was needing to readjust so yeah. it, it's it's normal now and my husband as it, it knows it is too he's he's such a support yes that's yeah. great so, that's yeah. great that's um, so tell us what you think the best thing you've done to set yourself up for success has been oh um well it could be a couple of things but being aware and ready to try something different and um um having set things up to like that take take up it when I got so sick Mm -hmm. um but also so on the creative side um see they would have when I first published they wouldn't let me try something new and so I always wrote cowboys humorous cowboys in the same series and then when I told them that and I signed the contract in the last three books in that contract they were still cowboys but they were sit on a new on a new range and they were with uh uh a bunch of uh it, it was a to help kids ranch and mm-hmm. anyway mm-hmm. so it was fun but um I had never tried anything else because I was my I was making a great living, you know, just riding right. cowboys. And I had my hair salon. So for the first when I was creating those first few books, you know, I did a lot of cowboys hair. And so I'm not a cowgirl, but I had <laughs> lots of cowboys and lots of cowgirls. I, I I had one of the best horse trainers in the world was one of my customers. And um, so I got a lot of information. I asked them lots of questions. And so but when I went Andy, you know, I was like, you know, I don't have to always write about cowboys. Right. And so my first series that I wrote was a takeoff of my original Texas matchmakers, Mule Hollow, though I wrote uh, that series. And, and there, they had to all be novella, not novellas, but they had to no, not be longer than 40,000 words because all my contracts were in 55,000 and above. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't write in that. So I had, I wrote novellas, which was fine because I could write faster and I got more books out, which helped me get my indie name out. Mm-hmm. But um, we went to the beach every year. I love, I don't like playing on the beach, but I love the atmosphere of the beach. I love the sunshine. I love the here in the water. You know, I just love that. And so my second series, I thought, hey, I own my career now. I, I could try something new. That's so right. I wrote my first beach series set in an inn and I loved every moment of it. And it's been a success too. And so now I normally write and I love it. I write a cowboy series. And then I write a beach series and uh, I, uh, you know, and so each, those series are rather long. Some of them have uh, up to nine or 10 books in it. And I learned and they do that, that one, that last series that has 10 books in it, the 10th book leads to the, another series. But I learned that um, about five to seven, you know, is 
you get your most money. Plus I get a free book at the beginning to advertise. So right. now most of my series are, are about five to seven books. And, uh, but I think it's going to be five because the seventh, the sixth and seventh books that I've tested, they just don't sell as much as the other ones. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I do that, but my newest series, I'm testing out, um, a, a, a little bit more, it has a little bit more, um, uh, well, but I can't get the word out, but, um, not romance. It deals with the relationship a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, three women and the one is a mother and she's a widow and it, and she's her storyline is in all the books and it, and it goes through the whole storyline, her, her getting over her husband's death and she moves herself from the ranch mm -hmm. It's set near Corpus Christi from the huge ranch. They have humongous ranches out there. And uh, so she, they have a 200,000 acre ranch with, out there, which, which is huge, but there's lots of them out there. And so she takes herself and, and she buys an inn. And so it's, uh, oh my it's brain. more women's fiction. Kind it's of got women's fiction. Yes. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. So it's women's fiction and then romance. And so it has her, her sons have lost their dad. He drowned when they were running cows and, uh, the mother, they don't have, she doesn't have any grandkids and they all lived at the ranch. And so she decides to move and buy this inn where she met him when he was on vacation with his parents. And, um, it's, uh, Stargazer Inn series is the name of it. And I, I love writing it and I wasn't sure how it would be accepted. And I was determined, and, and but it takes more of my time than just writing a romance but it has a romance in it. Each one of her sons has a romance in each book. And it's been fun. I combined cowboys and beaches in this series. And it's been <laughs> really fun. And I wasn't sure, but because I wrote that book and then I got sick. And so, of course, the book went up and then it came down and it went, the ranks went way up high because I wasn't, there wasn't another book coming with it at that time. But now they're, they're doing well. And uh, I was, I'm going to write a fifth book. Uh, a fifth book in it, like I had originally planned. Um, and it's telling each one of the stories and it deals with, like I say, she lost her husband. So it's another one of my books that deals with, you know, losing someone you love, not someone you were married to, but you didn't really love him anymore. Someone you desperately loved and he died and she's doing this. And then, you know, the carpenter comes in and he also went through the same thing. And, uh, he he lost his wife and uh anyway so there that relationship goes through all the whole series and the book i'm writing right now in the series they're getting married finally and but each of their sons have gone through stuff and the and their female and it, anyway the series is doing well and i'm pleased um but i after this and last that's one because, I, but that's because you took the chance like you're willing i, to I know and so yourself. that's and the that's biggest that's chance great. i've taken since i went indie Mm -hmm. uh, writing something a little bit different, mm -hmm. but still similar to the same. And, yes. uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm in loving it. And so that, uh, that's my answer to that. It was a mindset change and, um, yeah. Yeah. Willing to yeah. take chances. Yeah. So yeah. it's good. It's worth taking a chance sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll stay in it. It'll depend. It takes longer to write those books. And I'm kind of addicted to writing a book every every month or every six weeks, you know, and so <laughs> these take about two months, but you know, it's just yeah. two months. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have my, uh, I do have a, uh, I did start another name and, uh, she writes cowboys and in strictly, uh, uh, NKU and, and I enjoy it, but they're short, you know, they're, they, they could be longer there, but I, I, I like writing a 40,000 word book. You know, it's just something that appeals to me. And so I do that. And um, just real quickly, I mean, I, you know, I started uh, translating, you know, having my books translated. Yes. And I have a huge amount of books translated. Uh, I hired several. And uh, in Germany, and I only do in Germany. I, I was going to try a lot of other places, but my Germans took off and I, so I just hired another German translator and I, and I have two going at one time. And so one translates, uh, my other name is Hope Moore. One translates Hope's books and one translates my books. And then I had hired some others to translate some of the others. But for me in Germany, just like here, my cowboys do the best. And 
and mm-hmm. uh, and I love it. So I just always say, write what you like, and and I don't know if I'll ever translate anywhere else. I tried a couple, and I they didn't do so. That's when I concentrated on Germany. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so. great though. And that's good to know because I think a lot of people, myself included, yes. wonder how like small town Texas would mm-hmm. translate to other, you know, languages and stuff. So yes. that's and good to know. Yeah. Yeah. But my other series does okay. My 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 beach series do okay, but not not as much as my romantic westerns. Yeah. So and are you so you have the one series in KU, but then do you have the other books wide or okay so I last year I decided to try some of well I I have a I I I got the rights back to all my original my Texas matchmakers all the books set in Mill Hollow that's um amazing. and I and some of them I was I was able to do enhanced editions to where you add stuff to the book mm-hmm. so that you can publish it, even though they're still publishing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was able to bring that series out early doing that. And uh, so anyway, um, I decided to try them in KU last year. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they went crazy. I mean, for so for like three months, I mean, they were red and the numbers went. Whoo, and then they started coming down. And they and while I was sick, they were still in there. I decided not to take them out yet, but I still kept uh, four of my series that weren't set in Mill Hollow. My my original uh, indie books that I wrote did not go in there, and so they were still wide. Um, so anyway, after I got well in January or February, I think I told my because uh, I'd been thinking about it. And in March is when they were, could come out. And I told them, I said, uh, uh, we're going to take them out. I told my daughter-in-law, I said, get ready to, to start taking them out and then spreading them out wide again. And as of now, because they went way high, but then they came down and they could make the same amount of money all over. And I wanted them to go wide and let the people that were emailing me on my Facebook ads, I would like to read this, but I don't get, I don't go to Amazon. And so we went wide again with them. And so now I keep hope she's strictly for KU. And, uh, and what I'm going to do this year, now that I'm getting my brain back is uh, I will write uh, one Deborah Clopton book and then one hope more and put the next one on pre-order. And then, but I won't ever put a pre-order like, now that you can do one up to a year. And so my pre-order on my new series is January, but it's going to come out probably next month or the month after that. Okay. It'll come out sooner than what I said, but I'll never, you know, originally you had to do a pre-order three months. You only mm-hmm. had three months. Well, now I'm taking long things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Since I learned my lesson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been so great i'm so glad we finally got you on uh, i but- hope so <laughs> oh it's just been so great I actually teared up a little bit earlier yeah me too i need just- my kleenex box yeah. and oh. <laughs> well story and so scary and and just such a good reminder that you know what we do is you know we can treat it like a very isolated thing but we really need to not we need to mm-hmm let people yes. into our um our processes and stuff so we appreciate you being here tell people where they can find you okay uh i really loved coming and and i thank y'all um i have deborahclopton.com is my e- is my newsletter I'm, I'm sorry my website getting my brain straight and then <laughs> uh you can find me on facebook uh deborah clopton you know and there's also i have an author page and a personal page and uh I could say you could find me on the other ones, but I'm never there. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> those are my two main places, my email. Yeah, okay. And you could follow me on Amazon, you know, you can do that, but that's basically it. Yeah. Right. So well, that sounds great. And, we'll- and y'all, I love your, I love y'all's uh, show. I listen oh. to every one of them. And thank um, you. Was- well, we're so happy that you're enjoying it and that yes. it's helpful. So, yes. and we're so glad we got to talk to you today. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah. All so, right. so thanks for listening today. You can find all those links at wish I'd known then podcast.com. And thanks to Alexa Larberg for editing and producing the show. See y'all next week. Bye. 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 
Thanks for listening to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you, and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.